Hello guys and welcome to another video and today we're continuing the Keystone Highlight series and the Keystone we're going to be looking at is Wind Dancer. Now Wind Dancer actually has a pretty interesting history as it used to be a timeless Keystone that was attached to the Brutal Restraint Jewel and you can actually still obtain this Keystone from those Legacy Brutal Restraint Jewels in Standard League if they're in the name of Destra. However back in patch 3.11 Harvest League Several timeless keystones were moved onto the core passive tree, and one of those keystones was Wind Dancer. Now, before we get into the mechanics of Wind Dancer, I do want to quickly cover a few things. Firstly, even though it's improved slightly, there's still about 80% of you guys that watch my videos regularly that are not subscribed, so if you enjoy the videos, please do subscribe. Also, I've enabled memberships on the channel, so if you want to support me and the channel going forward, this is the best way that you can do that. You can find out more by clicking the join button below the video, it's next to the subscribe button, or you can find the supporter link in the video description. And once again, thank you guys for your continued support. Alright, enough of that, let's get into it. So, Wind Dancer is a core passive tree keystone, it's located over on the middle right hand side of the passive tree, just above the ranger star area. And this keystone grants 20% less attack damage taken if you haven't been hit by an attack recently. 10% more chance to evade attacks if you have been hit by an attack recently, and 20% more attack damage taken if you have been hit by an attack recently. Okay, let's look at the downside first. 20% more attack damage taken if you have been hit by an attack recently. Firstly, it's important to understand that all of these modifiers are specific to attacks and they have no impact on spells. This downside means that any attacks that would hit you and deal damage in the 4 second window following a previous attack that hit you, you'll take 20% more damage from those attacks. Let's take a quick look at mechanics that allow you to avoid attacks or avoid the damage from attacks. Firstly, you have evasion. This is your first line of defense against an attack. If an attack is evaded, it is fully avoided. The attack doesn't hit you and you don't take any damage. Then you have damage avoidance such as this modifier found on the Mist Wall Shield. If the damage from an attack is avoided, the attack still counts as a hit, even though you take no damage. Lastly, you have Block. If an attack is blocked, it will deal no damage by default, but it still counts as being hit. This is important because the downside of the Wind Dancer Keystone does not specify that the attack that hit you recently needed to deal damage. Therefore, even if you avoided the damage of an attack via an avoidance modifier or blocked an attack, it still counts as being hit by an attack, and this downside will then be active for the 4 seconds following being hit. However, as mentioned before, evading an attack means that the attack is fully avoided, including the hit, and therefore the downside of this keystone won't be activated. This doesn't mean that damage avoidance or block are bad stats to have when using Wind Dancer, however, because both damage avoidance and block are calculated after evasion in the damage calculation and therefore you can't possibly block or avoid an attack that you otherwise would have evaded. If you block or avoid damage from an attack, this means the attack made it through your evasion. Alright, now let's take a look at the upsides of Wind Dancer. 20% less attack damage taken if you haven't been hit by an attack recently, and 10% more chance to evade attacks if you have been hit by an attack recently. The first line is essentially the complete opposite of the downside, if an attack hasn't hit you in the last 4 seconds, this modifier is active, and if you would be hit by an attack that also deals damage to you, that damage will be lessened by 20%. Once again, the same rules apply here for damage avoidance modifiers and block. If you blocked an attack recently, or avoided the damage of an attack recently, this modifier will not be active. Then we have 10% more chance to evade attacks if you have been hit by an attack recently. To understand how this modifier works, we first need to take a look at evasion. This is the calculation used to work out the chance to evade an attack, and this graph shows the chance to evade attacks based on monster accuracy and player evasion rating. An average monster in a tier 16 map has 538 accuracy rating, and if the player has 20,000 evasion rating, they'll have a 70.5% chance to evade attacks from the average monster in that map but evasion isn't a completely chance-based mechanic. There's a system tied to evasion which fully eliminates lucky and unlucky streaks from occurring. This is known as the entropy system. When a character is attacked for the first time in a zone, or the first time in 100 server ticks or about 3.33 seconds, a random roll of entropy occurs, rolled between 0 and 99. 
Then, the attacker's chance to hit is added to the entropy value. If entropy is equal to or greater than 100, the attack is a hit, and 100 is subtracted from the value. Importantly, entropy is tied to the player character, not the monster, which means a group of monsters attacking a player will all share the same entropy value. Let's take the same example from earlier. In a tier 16 map, a group of average monsters have 538 accuracy rating. The player has a 20,000 evasion rating and has a 70.5% chance to evade attacks from these monsters. The monsters begin attacking the player. Upon contact of the first attack, entropy is randomly rolled between 0 and 99, and it lands on 55. The first monster's hit is added to the entry value, so 29.5 is added to 55, and the entry value is now 84.5. The attack is evaded. Another monster attacks the player. This monster's hit chance is also added to the entry value, so 29.5 is added to 84.5, and the entry value is now 114. This attack hits, and 100 is subtracted from the entry value, so it's now 14. As mentioned earlier, this system fully eliminates any lucky or unlucky streaks from occurring. You can still be lucky or unlucky on the initial entropy roll, however, but with the entropy system, if a player character has 1 in X chance to be hit by attacks, then the player will be hit exactly 1 in every X attacks, no matter what the initial entropy roll is. So how exactly does the 10% more chance to evade from Wind Dancer work? Well, let's take a look at the same example again. The player character was just hit by an attack, and 100 was subtracted from the entry value, which is now 14. The character has Wind Dancer, so because the character was hit by an attack in the last 4 seconds, the 10% more chance to evade attacks modifier is now active. More chance to evade is applied dynamically to the chance to evade any specific attack. So in this example, the character has 70.5% chance to evade, which is now 77.55% due to the 10% more chance to evade modifier. So the monster's hit chance is now 22.45%. The next monster initiates an attack, and their chance to hit is added to entropy. So 22.45 is added to 14, and the entropy value is now 36.45. Even though 10% more chance to evade seems like a low amount, it's actually quite effective, and becomes even more effective with higher amounts of evasion rating, up to a certain threshold. This is because the maximum chance to evade attacks is capped at 95%, so there's a theoretical sweet spot. This would be having the exact amount of evade chance so that the 10% more modifier from Wind Dancer allows you to reach the 95% cap on evade chance. Which means the ideal sweet spot is to have about 87% chance to evade, so that when you do get hit by an attack, your chance to evade becomes 95% after the modifier from Wind Dancer kicks in. At area level 85, an average monster has 559 accuracy, so you would need about 65,000 evasion to have about an 87% chance to evade attacks. That's quite a lot of evasion, but there are plenty of ways to gain evasion, and some ways to improve your chance to evade attacks and make your evasion more efficient. Grace is an aura that grants a large amount of flat evasion, and up to 29% more evasion at level 20. You can get a lot of increased evasion scaling from the passive tree, and modifiers such as the Eldritch Body Armor Implicit that grants increased Grace Aura effect to further improve your evasion scaling. There's also Dread Banner, which applies 21% less accuracy rating to nearby enemies at level 20, and scales with Aura effect too. Blind is a debuff that applies 20% less accuracy and 20% less evasion, this can also be scaled with modifiers to blind effect, that can be found on the passive tree and on gear. You can actually gain quite a considerable amount of blind effect with low investment, for example the Silent Steps wheel right below the Wind Dancer Keystone provides 70% blind effect, and you can get another 40% from the Blind Mastery itself. If you're using Dread Banner with blind, the less accuracy modifiers will be multiplied together before being applied. And you could consider Enfeeble too, a curse which reduces the target's accuracy rating by 19% on a level 20 gem, and also scales with curse effect. By inflicting blind on monsters, you'll be able to massively improve the efficiency of your evasion rating, so that you need less evasion to reach that sweet spot. A standard level 85 monster that is blinded with no additional blind effect will have 447 accuracy rating. To reach the sweet spot of 87% chance to evade, we now only need 50,000 evasion rating, and this could be improved even further still by having additional blind effect. 
There's also this very strong modifier that can be found on a watcher's eye jewel. This provides additional chance to evade attacks while affected by grace, and it rolls up to 8%. This modifier is unaffected by modifiers to evasion or accuracy, but it will be scaled by the more chance to evade modifier on wind answer. The chance to evade is added directly to the evasion calculation. So against the average level 85 monster, you'd only need about 35,000 evasion to reach the 87% chance to evade if you were also using a max roll watcher's eye modifier. And that goes down to 27,000 evasion rating if you're also blinding those monsters as well. There's a few other modifiers in the game that affect chance to evade too, like the new armor and evasion mastery that provides 5% more chance to evade melee attacks and the Raider's Avatar of the Chase Ascendancy Notable that provides 10% more chance to evade attacks during Onslaught. These modifiers, including the one on Wind Dancer, will be multiplied together before being applied. Be aware that there are monsters in the game that have modifiers that increase their accuracy rating. You'll be able to identify this modifier as it will show the accurate tag under the monster's name. Monsters can also have a precision aura that will increase the accuracy and critical strike chance of all of the monsters around them. And there is also another modifier, Blinds, which inflicts blind on hit with a 100% increased blind effect, largely reducing your evasion rating. In these cases, having a way to blind monsters is extremely effective, especially with increased blind effect, as you'll be able to cut down a monster's increased accuracy, lowering their hit chance. So when should you use Wind Dancer? Well, there's two main uses for this keystone. The first is bossing, where you use the keystone purely for the less attack damage taken modifier. In this case, you may not even have much of any evasion rating at all, but you're actively avoiding the boss's normal attacks so that you can use the damage reduction from the keystone to potentially tank a large attack, such as the Shaper Slam. And the second, more common use case, is on a character that has high chance to evade attacks. Therefore, the optimal use case for this keystone would be when you have 87% chance to evade against the average monster and you can obtain that through any of the methods we've already discussed. With this setup, you have the best chance of avoiding the more attack damage taken downside of Wind Dancer, and once you have that, this keystone becomes a very good option defensively to help mitigate the damage of attacks that get through your defenses. That's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe for more content like this in the future, and the Keystone Highlight series will continue on the lead up to ExileCon, Thanks very much for watching, and as always, stay tuned, and stay safe.